live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2018, brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's production here at the AWS Public Sector Show in Washington, D.C. I'm Stu Miniman, my host for this week will also be Dave Vellante and John Furrier doing a day and a half worth of programming. Uh, I've covered lots of uh, Amazon ecosystem shows and happy to welcome to the program first time guest and first time on the program, Dan Fallon, who's a, the Director of Public Sector Systems Engineers at Nutanix. Dan, great to see you. Thank you, Stu. Happy to be here. All right, so uh, you know, I've, you and I have known each other for a number of years. Uh, I, I was at, I've been at every dot next actually that Nutanix has had. Uh, really, most of the time at Nutanix, you know, we're talking about people's data centers. But you know, we've been watching how Nutanix really went from everybody, you know, that hyperconverged term that we threw out. Uh, but now, you know, the, the messaging is around enterprise cloud. Uh, the portfolio has definitely expanded, as have the partnerships. Uh, g give us, Dan, you know why Nutanix is at the show, and uh, a little bit about your role at the company. Yeah, yeah, so um, I lead our, our public sector uh, technical group, so systems engineering, so we have all our government business, uh, state, local, and federal, rolled up into one group. Um, so I'm based out, lo local show for me, uh, in the DC area. Um, and this is our, our second year attending the, the public sector summit. So, um, you know, last year it was, after our Calm acquisition, we really starting to step into the space of, I would say, solving the, uh, the cloud problem for, for organizations and blending your, your on-prem environment into your public cloud. So that was you know, kind of our focus last year when, when the marketing team and we kind of get together and figure out what shows we're at. We're like, let's do you know, AWS. It was, it was kind of a new one. We're like, all right, we'll, we'll be good. I, I would say it was a, it was a hit last year. Um, and then this year, you know, we made some additional acquisitions, announced it at our large .next conference, and uh, really focusing on on Beam and cost optimization. Yeah, so. so Dan, I remember back a couple of years ago, people would you know knock on Nutanix. They're like, ah, they're just VDI, and, and really they only work on the government sector. Uh, you know, it's like federal is like a big <laughs> thing because they can get to a certain price point that you know some person can sign off on. And we're like, um, government's pretty you know a pretty impressive segment. You know, you look at the show. I, I hear we're expecting about ten thousand people, which is typical yeah. for these regional shows. But this is more than that. The public sector. Uh, so. Tell us a little bit about your customers and love to hear you talk about what use cases they are and how they think about cloud and look at Amazon and look at Nutanix and, and how that fits for them. Yeah, yeah, and I, I actually just heard from our uh, director of marketing here that it's approaching 14,000. So wow. they're, they're blowing out the attendance. Um, yeah, and I mean, definitely government is unique. That's kind of why we have it divided into a, a vertical. Uh, Nutanix was very early on in the federal um, and it, Unlike a lot of startup small companies, instead of running away from the additional security burden, the compliance uh, requirements, um, the leadership, Dirish and Sadish, leaned into it. They said, all right, let's, let's build out our federal team, let's go out and do common criteria compliance, some certifications that cost a lot of money. Um, so they, they really you know, uh, leaned into that and helped the organization grow in federal, and that kind of came our beachhead, and then obviously Nutanix has just grown around the world since then, but um, across public sector, really a couple different verticals. I, they actually combined the government units uh, about a year ago now, so I'm getting uh, more and more familiar with the state and local business as well as the education, and you can kind of look at those as three separate verticals, and then my kind of background is, is federal. I've been here uh, doing contracting, consulting work for the federal government and now at Nutanix. And so they all kind of have a different spin. Um, in the federal government, since we're in DC, start there first, um, really big focus on uh, data center optimization and cloud, uh, cloud first mandates. So, you know, I, I get into discussions because there's, there's really a larger conversation to be had on like, what is cloud? A lot of people see it as a destination, but it's really, they have um, scorecards that they need to close, consolidate data centers, and part of that involves moving to the cloud, part of that involves um, just refactoring their on-prem and, and you know, could be hyper-converged, just really 
getting to a better optimized state in their on-prem data center. So. Yeah, and one thing I, I like is when you talk to customers, they don't get into these arguments over like, well, what is a private cloud? What is, you know, the, how do I measure these public clouds? They're like, yes, I have a cloud strategy. And you're right, the government has certain, here's the criteria we need to follow. Here's the services you can buy. Uh, you know, I'm sure they've got GSA contracts for yep. uh, lots of different things that they can buy off of. Uh, but Nutanix has a tool uh, that you're talking about at the show called Beam. Why don't you explain how that fits into helping customers understand, you know, what applications they put where and how they have they manage their entire infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think um, whenever I get into those conversations with cloud, I always like to understand, all right, why cloud? Why are you moving into cloud? And a lot of times it is higher level mandates, you know, that there, there's a presidential memo, there's a new, you know, so they, there are laws they have to follow in terms of uh, optimization of the data center. But there, if you peel it back, um, there are, you know, agility in, in getting uh, rapid time to market. Um, but the cost is a big thing, and a lot of times because of those mandates, the cost kind of has to be a second factor, and they, so it might end up being more expensive because they're not really taking that into consideration, because they're, they're being told to go. So when uh, Nutanix uh, launched Beam at .next, it, I really see it as a, a very good play in the public sector space because I'll, I hear agencies kind of get the bill after the fact. And then they have this shock of like, well our budget for cloud spend this year is going to be eaten up in our first couple months, you know, based on this first bill. So with Beam we have a lot of um, governance and cost control, but also the budgeting aspect, which I think will be huge in government, because they, you know, they have a fixed budget. They're really, they're not as used to doing things OPEX. They're very cop CapEx minded. So the cloud spend, they kind of have to change how they're thinking and Beam gives them that budget analysis so they can say, all right, I'm going to spend this much a month and do the allocation and break it down. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. For, for people that don't work with the government, they always hear like, oh, well they spent you know, $100 for a hammer, they're overspending, but you know, in my career, I've, I've worked with government and you, know, you, you get the calls at the end of the quarter, which is like, oh my gosh, I actually haven't used up my budget and I better use it now or uh, yeah, I won't yeah, get it, it next quarter or next year. Uh, so you know, cost, absolutely uh, a key concern. Maybe get, drill us in one down level as to you know, what kind of thing, how does Beam help them, you said, understand, optimize what they have as well as plan for the future. Yeah, yeah, so they're, um, you know, Beam, Beam hooks into the public cloud providers as well as your on-prem stack. Um, there are a couple different views. We've already uh, refactored it into the nice Nutanix UI, so you have the same look and feel. But you have a couple different views. You have the cost visibility view, so your spend uh, per day, per month, per year. Um, and then you have a, an analyzed view, so there's a, a spend efficiency view. So you can actually get a uh, quick visualization of, am I getting the best value out of my cloud contract? And this is you know, really common in government, they'll cut some type of ELA or longer term contract, but if you're not using all those credits or taking the best benefit, you're not getting your ROI. So the spend efficiency will help in that aspect. Um, there are, you know, the Beam goes beyond just visibility. So you have ability to do one-click cost controls. So maybe, you know, change things from spot to reserve instances. Uh, you can also drill down into the subservices. So, oh, that's costing more than I thought. You know, is it my NAT service or my low balancer service? Like, which, which exact spot is taking all that, that cost? Um, and then the, the budget allows you to build cost centers within your org. So build out and you know, chargeback is hit or miss in government. Sometimes it's way up at the top of the command, but sometimes you know we are seeing more and more orgs, and especially on the uh, service provider and Fed integrator side, you know, common scenario is government contract awarded to a Fed integrator, and they build out a private cloud and need to do chargeback. So that's another big aspect of Beam. Yeah, it, it, it's so funny. Remember, you know, just a few years ago, it's like, oh, well, public cloud, it's, it's super easy and super cheap, and like, well, when you actually dig into it, well, it, it's, it's different, yeah, <laughs> is I exactly. guess what I would say. It's simple isn't necessarily what I would say, um, and 
cost depends on what you're doing with it and how you yep. do it. So we talked a bit about Federal. Uh, you were telling me off camera that you were seeing a lot of the SLED customers here. So tell, yep. give us a little insight as to the, what are some of the concerns, uh, what are some of the, the, the real things that you know, that segment uh, of public sector are looking for at, at this show uh, in front of yeah. the ecosystem. Yeah, that's it's one reason we love doing this show and it's, it's a great spot that brings together because state and local is so regionalized. Um, you know, 50 states and then all the different counties and cities and a lot of them attend here. I, I had, um, you know, kind of just gotten into public sector when this show happened last year and I met a lot of our SLEG customers here for the first time. So um, it's a good, you know, bring them all to one spot, which is rare in state and local. It's a lot more regional conferences. So the, the challenge with state and local is because it's so regionalized and then you really have four verticals within state and local. You have the state business, which is kind of mirrors federal and more large enterprise. Some states are adopting cloud-first strategies. Some states are kind of still figuring it out. Um, so some states are mirroring fed government and they have this kind of cloud-first and trying to figure out how to make that work. And then at the local level, you have the county and cities and very, very scattered on their approach. But there are, we have, um, some significant sized counties that are using Nutanix with things like Cloud Connect to back up into AWS. And then I'd say higher ed is probably the most forward leaning in terms of their cloud usage. A lot of higher ed pushing aggressively into cloud. Actually where I used to work, Maryland, um, University of Maryland, aggressive push there. So they, they still have a lot of fragmented IT on-prem though. They have different orgs, business school, engineering school with their own kind of little IT fiefdoms, and then you have central IT trying to standardize and do, make more public cloud usage. So, so they have a lot of the same challenges of a big enterprise where they need to kind of get that visibility and cost control across not only their on-prem, but also as they move into public public cloud. Yeah, Dan, one of the things I've loved uh, when, I, when I dig into, you know, whether it's the federal government or even the local government, how technology and IT are helping drive innovation. You know, we, we often don't think of, you know, you think about government, you know, just mired in bureaucracy. I yeah. uh, wonder if you have any, you know, customer stories you can share about, you know, fun and interesting things people are doing, you know, on top of the infrastructure, transformational type of activities. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, kind of the uh, buzzword maybe of, of this year seems to be a lot around IoT and machine learning. Um, so it's still a lot in the pilot phases, uh, but Nutanix, we announced Project Sherlock at .NET, so kind of our uh, approach to really a PaaS um, IoT at, at the edge, so PaaS machine learning at the edge. Um, and we actually just deployed our first customer on the commercial side uh, a week ago, so still early days, but I would say the interest at the um, state and local level is huge. That you know, smart city initiatives, um, self-driving car initiatives and just the data is overwhelming. So they're, they're planning ahead. Some of them are pretty far along, but there's obviously starts and stops on um, where these initiatives are going. But the, the, the amount of data and it's all dispersed and just how to get their arms around that, how to control that. And then in federal, there's a lot of um, uh, requests for machine learning out at the tactical edge. So we have our you know, soldiers forward deployed, how do they take their imagery and analyze that and not have to wait 24 hours for someone to come back from the, the main data center? And that's, I mean, that's real life-saving, game-changing for them to be able to analyze it right then and there. And also big in, in disaster uh, relief scenarios. So, you know, being able to analyze, I was talking to um, one customer we had at a CXO roundtable last week at our, our local .next event, and they were talking about after the hurricanes in uh, Puerto Rico is how to analyze like, where's there even power? Where's the water good? And, and overlaying all that on imagery. But right now that's like 15 different sources that they were trying to pull together into one system. 
So a lot of challenges like that that people are trying to address. Yeah, and I love that, Dan, and you, I think you hit right on it. It's, it's data at the center of it. How can I leverage it? How can I get new value out of it? Uh, I've talked to some government agencies that are like, you know, how do I transform how we do parking in a city? I have the data, we have some sensors. Oh, wait, we can actually make an app. Sometimes it's partnering uh, with the commercial side and business, um, but other times it's government just driving these forward. All right, Dan, want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, we're just kicking off the event, but uh, you know, give us a final takeaway for Nutanix, AWS here at Public Sector Summit, what you want the takeaways to be. Yeah, well, um, I mean, we are, uh, we're here both days. I encourage everyone to stop by and uh, talk to Nutanix, and really, we're, um, Beam was uh, just launched, so the great thing is it's our first SaaS offering, which is obviously a mind shift for us, but you can demo it uh, just by signing up. So it's, it's kind of you know traditional where we've been in the infrastructure market where we get customers that are like, oh, I want to try it out, and we have to ship them a system or they have to download software. Now it's just, oh, go sign up on the, on the SaaS offering. So I think that'll be a uh, great new delivery vehicle for Nutanix, and I think as we kind of um, shape our ecosystem of not only different ways to consume with uh, Xi Cloud Services, Beam being SaaS, but also uh, different capital models in terms of the way the customers purchase. I think that's a, another big driver around cloud is, is how, um, how the finance side consumes IT. So I think it's great to see, you know, we're kind of expanding, blending into the AWS ecosystem as well, um, but tying it all together so people can manage everything from one spot. All right, with well Dan Fallon, Pleasure chatting with you this morning. Help me kick things up, and absolutely, the diversity of technologies, the how we are going to purchase things, changing quite a lot. Everything from what you know, modernizing our data center uh, to SaaS application. Uh, the thing you know, I remember at .next, I said modernize the platform, then we can modernize the applications on top of it. So working through with customers through those changes. All right, we have uh, just like Dan said, day and a half worth of coverage here on the Cube. Of course, check thecube.net uh, for all the recordings as well as all the shows we'll be at. Uh, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.